Hello, and welcome to a quick review of the three kinds of monopolies we've talked about this unit. Uh, we're going to talk about standard single price monopoly and a standard price discriminating monopoly first and kind of compare and contrast those. And then we'll talk about uh, natural monopolies, um, the difference between natural and what I'm calling and what sometimes economists call standard monopolies is the natural monopoly has economy of scale within the relevant range of production. Therefore, it's cheaper from society's point of view to just have one producer. So um, first thing here, the single price monopoly is on your left. The price discriminating monopolist is on your right. Uh, pretty standard stuff here. They always uh, are going to produce where MR equals MC. In this case, since demand and marginal revenue are the same thing, they also still produce at MR equals MC. And of course, profit in both cases, price minus ATC times the quantity produced. The difference for the price discriminating monopolist is there are a series of prices here. So they have a number of opportunities to make profit because they're selling to different groups at different prices. Um, so pretty straightforward stuff as far as this goes. But let's just look at this uh, chart here and try to compare and contrast based on pricing policy, profit, and efficiency. So a single price monopoly has monopoly. I'm just going to write Mo Power. So it can name its price. Price discriminating monopoly also has monopoly power. It can name its price. Here's where the differences come in. Um, the price discriminating monopoly can segment its market, meaning it can look at uh, consumers that um, are in a hurry and have a very inelastic kind of demand or insensitivity to price. And then they can look at um, consumers who are very sensitive to price and have time on their side and can wait until the price drops to where they want it. So that's a classic example um, with airlines. The other thing that um, a price discriminating monopoly has that a single price monopoly does not is they have the ability to prevent resale. So movie theaters um, do have some price discriminating ability. However, if you really wanted to, as a student with a student ID, you could go in there and buy a bunch of tickets to a movie at student prices and then stand outside the theater and resell them to adults for less than full price and more than you paid to make a profit. So there's nothing preventing that from happening. Um, I guess if they really checked the tickets and saw adults had student tickets, maybe they would kick them out or arrest you, but I kind of doubt it. Um, airlines, obviously, you can prevent resale. So there's, there's a, a closer to perfect price discrimination. Now, what about profit? Well, both of them can earn profit in the long run. Obviously, they can earn that or a loss in the short run or break even in the short run. Um, now, nobody learn, earns a loss in the, in the short run. Uh, sorry, in the long run, excuse me. So they would both shut down if they were earning a loss in the short run. Let's, not, let's make this profit here, PR. But if we go back to the uh, graph real quick and look at the differences here, we don't know anything about these two firms in terms of the numbers, but there is relatively more opportunity for economic profit from the price discriminating firm, as I mentioned before, because they have this series of prices they can sell at. So there's a price here. You subtract the ATC there, 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 there. There's a variety of prices, and that allows you to make more profit. Finally, the last way to look at this is whether or not these firms are efficient. A monopoly is definitely not allocatively efficient, nor is it productively efficient. Okay? Their price is above ATC, and their price is also above MC. So they are not efficient at all. But what about um, what about price discriminatory monopolies? In some sense, they are um, allocatively efficient, though they are not productively efficient. So in this case, since the demand curve is the same as price, is the same as marginal revenue, in other words, every time we sell one more, we get that value in terms of marginal revenue. Well, at this point right here, price does equal marginal cost. Now, price is above average total cost which makes us a very potentially profitable firm. The other thing to look at here in terms of efficiency is 
there is a dead weight loss for the single price monopoly. Okay, there's no dead weight loss for the price discriminating monopoly. For the single price monopoly, you do have a little bit of consumer surplus, but there's no consumer surplus at all for the price discriminating monopolist uh, because they are selling these products, whatever they are, at the price, the exact price people are willing to pay. We'll talk about natural monopoly next.